Hello everyone, welcome back to another week here on Eat Sleep Brief. This week's video I'm going to be covering a question that lately I've been getting asked a lot. A lot of you may know I've recently um, added a calcium reactor to my tank um, and it just seems that a lot of people in a good way are getting uh, very interested in it. I have a lot of people uh, messaging me, commenting, and wanting to know exactly what they need to purchase to get a calcium reactor up and running. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys everything you need uh, to get a calcium reactor up and running for your reef tank, uh, no matter what size. Um, obviously, um, you know, the size reactor I'm be showing today isn't going to be ideal for every size tank, but I'm going to be showing you the options if you have a bigger tank. Um, and we're going to be getting all this done for under $1,000. You guys heard right, under $1,000. Now, I know a lot of you guys may be flipping out already say $1,000 is just too much money. Just think of it this way. You may be saying that's really expensive. You're looking at the cost of the reactor. But think of it in a way of what it's costing you not to have a calcium reactor. To elaborate a little bit more, how much instability it's causing in your reef tank. Or maybe you do have a lot of stability but that comes with a lot of work, a lot of maintenance. So if you want a tank that's super stable, low maintenance, at the end of the day, it, it's time-proof, bulletproof, uh, more happier coral, more growth. I mean, the list goes on and on. Stay tuned, because you guys are gonna love this video. So here's starting out, guys, uh, for the reactor. I highly recommend Geo Reactors. These reactors are very, very good reactors made here in the United States. Um, if you want some something that's going to be tried and true, um, in proven platform, you don't, you know, there's no tinkering, no guessing. Um, I'd 100% go with the Geo Reactor. You can check them out, geosreef.com. Uh, they're in no way, shape, or form sponsoring this, so this is a very uh, general and unique uh, promotion for them. Because again, a great product is very hard to argue. Um, so yeah. For my specific tank, I'm not running this one. I'm running the T1 uh, reactor in my tank, but believe me, guys, I don't recommend it. I 100% say if I could do it over again, say to go this route. Uh, so this reactor here is going to handle anywhere uh, aquariums up to 125 gallons, um, you can see here. And um, it's a great reactor, very simple, very straightforward. It comes with a circulation pump. You can kind of see it here. Um, but again, it's very bulletproof, uh, you know, not much to it. Uh, it's a good thing, you know, you don't want any crazy gadgets on it. The crazier the gadgets, the more complicated they are and more probability they are of failing down the road. Now for you guys that maybe have bigger tanks and you're probably saying this may be a little bit too small, uh, the good thing is they have bigger lineups, even duals, I mean, even these huge commercial reactors. Um, but for up to 125 gallons, this will cover uh, you pretty well. I mean, in general, I think most of us are either going to be running this bad boy here, the Nano, um, or the CR612. Um, and apart from that, that's really all you're going to need as far as the reactor is concerned. If you are running a secondary chamber, uh, Geo does make secondary chambers, the SMC410, the 415, and the 618. Again, generally speaking, the 410 should be plenty. Uh, personally, I actually went with an Avastor Marine uh, fluidized me media reactor. Now, these are pretty interesting. They're sold. Um, I have a video all on its own, but these are sold in DIYs where you can uh, get all the parts from them. You build it on your own, or you can have them build it for you. The MR5, which is the one I am running, uh, that actually, am I running the 5 or the 10? Hmm. No, actually, I believe I'm running this bad boy, the MR5. So, yes, uh, the MR5 is $64.99. Uh, the MR10 is 114 and again, generally speaking, I think we're uh, all going to be good with MR5s or MR10s if you got bigger tanks. And the reason you're running the secondary chamber for you guys that aren't aware uh, is this is going to allow more contact time with the media, which is going to increase the pH. So by the time it gets out of the reactor, it's not as low as it is inside the chamber. As you guys know, all the media is uh, being run in the reactor. Uh, and generally speaking, as soon as this page loads, generally speaking, uh, the way you melt the coral is by lowering the pH in this chamber. Uh, so having a secondary chamber allows for 
more contact time in this chamber so by the time it exits into your tank it's not as low as it was in this main chamber. So the next thing you are going to need is a controller, a pH controller to be exact. A lot of you guys out there may have uh, Neptune Apex, e I mean there's GHL, there's a ton of controllers out there for pH. If your controller has a pH probe, perfect, you don't need to buy this, you're going to save 130 bucks. But if you're like me and you have no controller, you're going to need a pH controller. Now you can get away without this, but I do not recommend it whatsoever. So what this is going to do, this pH probe here is going to be connected. Come on. It's going to be connected right in here. So when it's inserted inside the main reactor, it allows you to set, I don't know if you guys can see, but right here it allows you to set the, um, the desired pH. So if it goes over or under whatever number you want, it shuts it off, thus shutting off the CO2 uh, coming into, <coughs> excuse me, into the main reactor. And you guys are probably saying, well, why does that matter? Well, because if the pH gets too low, it's going to melt all the media and pretty much turn into a sludge. If the pH is too high, you're not going to be melting any coral, thus it's as if you never had the reactor. So having your pH a certain number, uh, in my case 6.7, 6.6, uh, this controller helps maintain that by shutting on or off the uh, the regulator depending on if it needs more or less CO2. And again, this can be purchased on Amazon. Um, I'm, I'm a Prime member on Amazon, so stuff gets here next day in, in most cases. So the next thing in the lineup, you are going to need a CO2 um, regulator. The one I'm using here is a Milwaukee uh, regulator. I'm also using the Milwaukee uh, controller here, so I figured to stay with the same brand. Um, now this guy here is going to be your, your CO2 regulator coming from out of your tank um, into the main reactor here. So this bad boy, it's been very straightforward. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been running it for about close to two months. Uh, no complaints whatsoever. It's very simple, very straightforward, and I highly recommend it. For 85 bucks, you really can't go wrong. And again, this can also be purchased on Amazon. For you guys feeling that you really want to go the next level, uh, you can go ahead and buy the carbon doser. Now, the carbon doser is just, it's the same exact thing as this, except it's an electronic uh, doser here. So it's a lot more high end, a lot more accurate, a lot more high end. As you can see, the price tag $349 versus $85. But honestly, let me give you guys a background as to why I didn't purchase it um, and the main reason for that is since I'm already running the pH controller I kind of found it useless to spend all this money because if for any reason the pH either goes too high or too low the controller is going to make sure that either shuts it on and off uh, to keep the same pH in the main chamber so again I didn't see a use for it because again I am running that controller you know, in the comments, let me know, am I kind of in the right thought process or am I not in the uh, right thought process? Uh, but that was my uh, whole thing here uh, with not purchasing that. The next thing in the lineup, you're obviously going to need a tank. I'm personally running a two and a half pound tank. This here is a five pound tank. Uh, if you have the space for a five pound, do a five pound. It'll just last you a lot longer. Um, when I ran the math on my 2.5 in a 45 gallon tank, it should last me about a year and a half. If I would have done this, this probably would have lasted me over two years. Um, you know, if you got a 100-gallon tank, this guy here will last you about, you know, seven months to a full year. Uh, so, you know, but you are going to want to make sure that it is aluminum. The only reason is because our tanks are salt water, so you don't want it to get corroded. So make sure it is aluminum. Another thing I want to let you guys know that I was crazy surprised about, when you do buy this brand new, you're not going to be able to use this tank. You're probably saying, what do you mean? Then why am I buying it? Well, here in California where I live, and I'm pretty sure it's pretty similar where you live, there's no one that refills them on the spot. So what I'm trying to say is when you walk into the store to exchange it, they're literally going to exchange it for another one that's already filled. They don't fill them there on the spot. So you're going to go out of your way and buy a brand new one, um, and you're never going to be able to use it. You're just going to go turn it in and trade it for a used one that's already filled. Um, 
you can also if you don't want to buy one here on Amazon you can actually walk into the places that trade them they'll sell you one uh, straight off the bat but I notice they tend to be about a hundred bucks 120 um, where the trade-in and the re I think the refill was like 15 bucks um, so it was still under a hundred dollars so again this was also purchased on Amazon just make sure it is um, aluminum and you should be good with a five pound if you have under you know a 70 gallon tank you can get away with the two and a half pound like I did um, but for anything bigger than that, I'd say shoot for a, a five pound and this should easily last you, um, you know, over, over or close to a year. So one of the very important things is with this specific uh, regulator, you're going to need a check valve. So a check valve in this specific scenario guarantees that any of the CO2 leaving here to go into the main chamber here. It makes sure that there is never a possibility for the water to return into the regulator here because that would damage it. Uh, so the, the way you can do that is obviously with a check valve. Now I know a lot of you guys are going to want to use the cheap check uh, check valves found here on Amazon. Um, you know, I'm not going to search for them because there's, there's plenty of them. What I am going to tell you is I tried them. Do not waste your time. Also, any check valve you get, you have to make sure they're for CO2. Because um, not just any check valve will work for CO2, you have to make sure it'll handle CO2. So what I went ahead and did is did the carbon doser check valve. Now if you're buying the carbon doser, it comes with the check valve already in the kit. So when you buy this, you don't need to purchase it. Uh, but luckily you can buy it separately. So if you're going to go with the Milwaukee regulator, be sure to buy the check valve. And don't try and be cheap and buy another one, guys. This one is proven. It's It, it, it literally... Was night and day on uh, my regulator it made it a lot more accurate made the bubbles a lot more accurate uh, so be sure spend the extra money and get yourself the carbon doser precision check valve so one of the final things that are needed is obviously you're gonna need media you're, personally I'm using the reborn media um, there's other brands let me see here if we can see some other brands <coughs> uh, it's not suggesting the other brands but anyways um, I'm personally using the Reborn. I did a lot of reading, a lot of research, and a lot of people uh, say it's good. There's another brand out there, I forget the name of it, which is probably just as good, um, but I was very happy with this. Generally speaking, this 8.8 .8 pounds uh, will be more than enough to fill this, and you'll probably have a little bit left over. And for you guys wondering how long will this media generally last you, um, it'll last you about a year. Uh, maybe a little bit less if you have big tank or big consumption, um, but in my tank, I know it's going to last me even longer than a year. Uh, but generally speaking, the 8.8 .8 pounds should be more than enough uh, to fill this MR510 uh, reactor here. So after that, you are going to need um, remag. So these are magnesium uh, pellets, I guess you can call them. So anytime you're melting coral skeleton and someone can correct me if i'm wrong but i believe it doesn't get any magnesium out it gets zero magnesium out it only gets alkalinity um, and calcium so for magnesium you're going to need these magnesium pellets in generally the way you put these in i believe it's 10 percent of whatever you're the total volume of reborn media so it's very little you need so generally speaking you should get away with this 2.2 pound bag for about 21 bucks now, one of the last things to this whole equation, and it's going to be probably one of the <laughs> most expensive ones, um, is going to be your uh, Kimura Peristaltic Continuous Duty Dosing Pump. So honestly, guys, this has been the biggest game changer. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people that have had calcium reactors even before I even thought about getting them. And they said this thing was a huge game changer on even more stability. Uh, because one, it's a peristaltic pump, so it never stops. This thing is literally running 24-7. Um, it has a little dial here where you can adjust the exact milliliters you want. Back in the day, the way it worked is you got like a maxi jet with a, a needle valve, and that's how you adjusted it. Over time, there would either be buildup in the line or there'd be a clog, and it pretty much mess everything up, thus messing up your overall dosing. Um, but from the guys I've been talking to, this is amazing. I've been running mine for about two months, and it's so easy, the thought of just increasing the dosage. You know, all I have to do is turn the dial a few more milliliters because it displays them here, um, and you're good to go. So this guy, as of now, it's been very hard to buy. It's almost out of stock everywhere. Even when I bought mine two months ago, they're almost impossible to buy. 
So you gotta really hit the notify me when in stock because everywhere you look, they're gonna be out of stock. There's some on eBay that are in stock, but those are gonna be coming directly from China, from the Kimura uh, warehouse. So uh, just keep an eye out. And you know, if you don't wanna order from overseas, just be sure that you're on top of it. Um, and if you can do a pre-order, even better. So I know in this video, guys, it was pretty long. I'm not gonna be running to how to uh, set it up. I kinda did do a video on that already, showing you guys how to get the whole thing running. So if you guys did miss that, be sure to check it out. I just wanted to do an overall video here of what's needed um, to get your calcium reactor up and running and what parts I'm using and I recommend. Now, if you do the math on everything I just have here, it's just under $1,000. And guys, if you got to do it, what I would do is piece it together, you know, slowly buy your reactor first, buy your secondary chamber, pH controller, um, CO2 regulator, buy the tank, the check valve, the um, media, and as well the remag, and lastly your pump. Uh, you know, if you guys got to piece it together, believe me, within a few months you'll have it up and running and you'll wonder why you didn't do this sooner. So guys, I'm going to leave this video here. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. Uh, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully I answered all those questions of all those people uh, that were DMing me and wondering exactly what I recommend and what I would suggest for you guys running. Hopefully this video answers all these questions. So we're going to leave it here. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, happy reefing. Till next time.